Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating this beautiful decorative mirror that is made from the garden fence sections that are available from the Dollar Tree. This project is part of a farmhouse themed collaborative effort along with several other extremely talented YouTube crafters. Make sure you check out their farmhouse creations as well and the link to the playlist will be in the description box below. I am so excited to share this super detailed tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say welcome back to my current and new subscribers to my channel. If you're a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into that project. Now we will be using three of these garden fence sections from the Dollar Tree. You want to go ahead and lay down your cutting mat and grab your cutting tools. Now I'll be using wire cutters and my X-Acto knife for this project. Now we will be cutting off the connection tabs on each end of the fence and all three stakes at the bottom. Then we'll cut it in half down the middle. Now to cut, you could use these tools or if you have a hot knife, that would be even easier. Now after cutting those connection tabs off, we want to go ahead and snip off those stakes at the bottom. Now we can go ahead and cut it in half. You want to find the center and carefully cut dashes down the center with your X-Acto knife. And then we can slice them apart. Now for your cut edges, you can use a nail file or sandpaper to smooth it out. You want to cut the second fence this way as well for four total parts. Now set those to the side and grab that third fence and we're going to be cutting out four of the scroll designs. Now we're going to be cutting around each side of the top of the scroll and then snipping at the bottom at the bottom of the scroll like shown here. And then I'm going to be using my wire cutters to roughly cut out each piece before making my precise cuts. Now these are the four sections that you'll be using and now it's time to separate them. Now I'll be using a combination of my fine tipped wire snippers and my X-Acto knife for this. And here's what your final pieces should look like. Now all we do is just sand down those edges and make them as smooth as possible. Next we're going to adhere the pieces together so I'm going to place some parchment paper down on my work table. Now we're going to start with the four side pieces. So these will be laid out in a square formation like I'm showing here. Now once laid out, you can go ahead and flip the pieces right side down and arrange the pieces so that the two side sections are slightly overlapping the top and bottom pieces.
Now once it's all even, we're going to be using hot glue and E6000 to secure these together. We're going to start with one side and we're going to apply a generous amount of that E6000 to each corner in like a circle. And then I'm going to add hot glue to the center of each of those circles. Then you just go ahead and place your side piece back into place and you want to add more hot glue around those edges where they connect. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat this on the other side. Now you wanna wait about 10 minutes for the hot glue to initially set, and then we're just gonna carefully slide the frame over to start working on those corner pieces. Now take your corner piece and you wanna position it where the side curls touch the frame and the bottom stem um, overlaps that corner. And then once positioned, you wanna apply that E6000 and hot glue combination to the corner and set that piece into place. And then you just want to apply some E6000 to those contact points where those side curls touch the frame. And then you want to finish that off with some hot glue. You want to make sure you repeat this on all four corners and let them dry for a couple of hours. And then your frame is secured. So now I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree pizza pan and go ahead and remove the labeling. I'm gonna flip that pan over and slide the pizza pan under the frame. And the back side of the pan and the back side of the frame should be facing you. You wanna center that frame on the pan as equally as possible. Then you wanna take a Sharpie and mark all four edges of the frame on the back of that pan. So now you can pick up your frame and set it to the side. What you wanna do now is grab your E6000 and you wanna apply a generous amount along the outer edges of the lines you just marked. And then you wanna follow up with hot glue. Now grab that frame and align it on top of the pan, setting it into the glue and pressing it into place. Then you wanna follow up with some hot glue along the edges. Now to help with maintaining good contact, I'm setting these weights on top while it dries, but you can use any weighted objects that work for you. Now once that hot glue dries, just follow up and you wanna add more hot glue to all the gaps around the frame where it contacts the pan. And once those dry, I'm going to apply a final layer of that hot glue in a zigzag motion over the fence and pan connection. I'm just so extra, but this will definitely make sure that connection will be solid. Now let that dry for an extra few hours. And then we should be able to go ahead and flip that over and we can work on the front side. Now we wanna start by taping off the edge of that pan because we're going to paint the frame. Now I will be using this white chalk paint. Now I'm just gonna take my dry chip brush and gently apply the paint and I wanna let some of that original fence finish show through. 
This gives that piece that rustic and aged look. And this fence is textured, so that adds more character. And here it is, all painted. So now this dries pretty quick, so we can go ahead and remove our tape. So next I'll be using these glass gems around the outermost edge of that pizza pan. So to do this, we'll be using E6000. So you want to apply a dab of that E6000 to each gem all the way around. And the outside round is done. So now I'm gonna add a mirror to the center. Now this mirror is 10 inches in a diameter and I purchased it from Amazon for about $2. So before we apply it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those little rubber pads off the bottom so it'll be flush to the pan. Then I'm gonna apply a generous amount of that E6000 to the back. Now you wanna carefully center it and apply it in place. And once that's in place, I can go ahead and apply that final round of those glass gems around the mirror. And here it is, all done. Now to hang this, I'm gonna attach a simple V-shaped hang wire made from wire from the hardware section of the Dollar Tree. And here I'm just curling up the edges of the wire to add some leverage to the hook. So now I'm just gonna center that hang wire on the back of that pizza pan and I'm gonna apply a generous amount of that E6000 to the bottom inch and a half of that wire. And once that's applied, let everything dry overnight. All right, so everything is dry. So now what we're going to do is we are testing our hang wire. Everything is secure and we're good to go there. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some floral stem pieces around our mirror. And I'm gonna wrap those around the mirror like an accent. Now to apply these, all I had to do was really tuck them under the pizza pan edge and they stayed right in place. You just wanna work them around the shape and arrange the flowers as desired. Now, after letting your mirror fully dry and cure for at least 48 hours, you can hang your final creation. How beautiful is this piece? I am so in love with this design and it looks so expensive. That painting technique that we use gives this piece that rustic and farmhouse look that we're going for and it looks so realistic. And adding those gems to the mirror really makes this a true showpiece for your home and your guests will definitely do a double take when you tell them about this DIY secret. Now I chose these flowers since I love this yellow, but you can choose any florals or greens that you like. You can even opt out of using any trims or flowers if you like. 
but check this option out. Look how great this looks with my DIY boxwood wreath I made for only $3. You can click on the link in the upper right hand corner of this video for the tutorial on this and I'll also put it in the description box below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with everyone that you think will love this project too. Make sure that you're following me on Facebook for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.